Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your host, Sean, and today, man, it's the start of something new, okay? We are officially in June. We're already a few months in, and as you guys know, in May, there was a huge emphasis on finding coins that you can make money on without grading. It's kind of a concept, you know, a concept that's been around for many decades, long before grading took shape long before your PCGS, your NGC grading companies. And what I'd like to do is continue on that kind of that tradition of, you know, finding stuff that will make you eggs super, super successful. Sorry, I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to kind of dictate what I wanted to say. It didn't work out too well. But I'm going to dedicate the better part of the summer all right, to discussing what it will take to become the most successful numismatist ever, ever. And I guess what really comes down to is being able to combine one of these three things or all three things, put it all into one and turn yourself into the complete package of a coin connoisseur. It sounds kind of ridiculous when you think about it that way, but what I, you know, the aim of this video is we're going to talk about the three things that you will have to master to be extremely successful in this hobby. Okay, it could be one of you know one of two things. You could be either be in this hobby to collect, all right, build your self empire, so to speak, of rare, valuable coins. You know, really interesting stuff that other people are interested in. And number two, if you want to get into the business of being a dealer, being a traveling dealer, where there is no overhead other than where you live and gas, all right, or show fees, you can also do that. All right, so we're going to take a look at a couple of things that are overlapping that you will absolute must master items. Okay, there's three of them that you're going to have to consider when you're, you know, wanting to get into this uh, coin collecting shtick like I have been for the longest time. I would have to say that I have grown as a numismatist, okay? And furthermore, I have been highly successful. I've been able to identify areas within the marketplace where I could take advantage and make money, okay? Over small, menial things. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in. But before I do so, remember, subscribe, hit the bell for instant notifications, all right? We are a couple weeks away from the actual summer vacation spot. June 21st, I guess, is the first day of summer. As you guys know, I've already done a few giveaways. If you wind again to the giveaways, they pop up when you least expect them. So if you hit the bell, you could jump on the video, take a look at it, see what it takes to win. Usually it's going to be just commenting below uh, in the video. All right. So come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm glad to give back. So the number three, three thing that you're going to want to master, regardless, okay, it, this is going to be one of those foregone conclusion uh, sensible choices, and that's going to be mastering the magnifier. This is probably one of the most important tool tools in the numismatist's arsenal. In case you don't know, a numismatist is a coin collector, a coin, you know, professional. Magnifier, not just any magnifier, okay? You want to focus on 10 times power and less, all right? Let me let me tell you why, because there is a lot of, there is a huge kind of like awareness and emphasis on being able to get in close with a 30 times power magnifier or maybe even a, um, you know, a, a USB microscope, all right? Yeah, I sell them in my Amazon you know, affiliate links. I don't get paid a whole heck of a lot, but I don't recommend buying it as the first tool in a coin collector's arsenal. Okay. If it's, if it's something that you're trying to look at and, and you need a 30 times magnifier or a hundred times microscope to look at it, it's nothing. It's meaningless at that point. Yeah, you're, you're splitting hairs and trying to identify something that just simply isn't there or is too minor to be worth anything. All right? I see it all the time on Facebook groups, on 
forearms, okay? Your heart is in the right place, but if you cannot find it with a 10 times power magnifier, it's nothing, all right? Your most recognizable varieties, whether they're in the Cherry Picker's Guide or not, all right, are all identifiable with a 10 times power magnifier or less. I highly recommend a triplet magnifier, okay? They got three lenses you put them together and it's a 10 times power, okay? Each wine functions, each lens functions as a three times power lens on its own. That's a good starting point, okay? They're relatively inexpensive. And in case you're wondering, I do sell them below in my um, affiliate links for Amazon, all right? So mastering the magnifier, if you get to that point, then you could use, you know, smartphones attachments, much like this. That's what I use for my close-up videos when we're looking at varieties, double dyes, various error, errors or non-errors, okay? Th this comes later. You don't need to buy this unless you intend on using it for maybe, you know, secondary sales. Actually taking good quality pictures using your smartphone, by the way, at the end of the video, I have a tutorial on how to take photos with your smartphone. It's gonna be at the end, or a little button and all that. But this can come later. But first and foremost, this is an important tool right here. I carry this one magnifier that I've had for about 10 years to coin shows, okay? Coin shows don't frown upon you taking out a magnifier because if you're spending $50 on a coin, if you're spending $250,000, $500,000, $10,000, $100,000 $100, on a coin, whether it's graded or not, the magnifier is what's going to allow you to determine if whether or not what you're buying is authentic, if it's a variety or an error, things of that nature. Plus, it's the ultimate cherry picker's tool. All right, If you could cherry pick coins out of coin roll hunting or at the coin show, the magnifier is going to be the first I that's going to be able to find, all right, and detect those rare and valuable coins that otherwise dealers miss, all right? So this is the number three th thing that you need to master, okay? And I alluded on it a hair when I talked about the magnifier, but the second thing that you will have to master if you want to be successful is know what errors and varieties are, especially if you're in the business to make money. All right, this is important because people generally, if you go on eBay at any given time and I've cherry picked scores of coins that they didn't know had a really nice cherry picker's guide variety, you know, right on the coin and they have nice quality pictures, but they didn't advertise it as such. You can buy the coin, turn around, sell it, flip it, keep it, add it to your collection and it make tons of money or enhance your collection that much bigger and better for yourself. If you could master exactly what an error and a variety a variety is, okay, you will be the king of the hill. Okay? There are those two things are completely different. All right? Errors are all kind of like, "Oops, I screwed up at the mint." Okay? If it occurs at the mint, it's an error. Secondly, with an error, okay, it's generally a one-time occurrence. Now, there are a few exceptions, like, you know, radical die breaks, shattered dies, cuds, things of that nature are classified as errors, but you can see the same progression of that cud or die break throughout a number of coins, okay? You could go through 100 coins all from the same batch, from the same strike time period, and see that same crack all the way across. But generally, some of those errors, like the really radical, like off-center, you know, by 60%, the capped dies, the uh, the bonded strikes, um, the struck on sanding disc, you know, some of the more obscure kind of like weird, weird way out there errors. Okay, those are things that you have to know exactly what they are to be successful. Because what if someone came up to you? I have this, this coin right here that uh, has a secondary image impression on it and it's got the reverse image on the front and vice versa. It looks really neat. Can you determine and tell that individual what they have? Okay, that's important, okay? Most folks right out of the chute, especially the new novice collectors, God bless you guys, by the way, you're enhancing this hobby, um, don't know what a flip over double strike, okay, offset by 130 degrees is. Okay, it's way too much information unless you're able to describe it and show it 
it, you know, visually, it's going to be tough for someone to determine. Okay, on the flip side, varieties, okay, are repunchment marks, double dies, transitionals, like um, proof die, you know, usage on business strike coins, kind of like the 1992 close AMs and all that. Um, you, you know, the missing mint mark variety coins, like the 1982 Roosevelt dime that has no mint mark and it's supposed to have a letter P for the mint for Philadelphia. You got to know what those are. Okay. With varieties, um, those all come from the master die. So as they're being struck, okay, they could strike 100,000 double dyed 1972 Lincoln cents. Okay. Based on the, the actual die life of that particular die all the way across, uh, until they replace it. All right, because it's going to get to a point where deterioration will force them to either re-engrave the die or completely trash them all together. All right. Um, so being able to discern what the errors of varieties are and what kind of like encompasses both groups together will make you extremely knowledgeable and possibly make tons of money on this. Um, you know, it, it's incredible. Okay, and this kind of goes into the number one thing that you will have to master to be successful in the coin business, all right? And that's mastering your resources and the market, okay? Would you guys ever know that the summertime is usually the quietest time of the year in terms of the overall coin market? Would you guys know that if I'd never brought it up? The thing is, it, it's a progressive kind of like seasonal thing that happens every single year. All right, so if you have high profile coins, would it make sense to sell it during the summer when there's less activity? Or would you sell it during the spring and possibly later fall months? Because you get into like October, November, that's when the market picks back up. It quiets down again in December and into January. And then when tax season hits, that is when the floodgates of Pandora open wide up and people are paying through the nose for some of the most menial kind of like minor you know, varieties and errors and things of that nature. And even low grade coins, you know, people will pay 10 to 20% more than they would say during the heat of the summer. I mean, no pun intended. It's like 95 degrees out there right now. It's insane. But that's the market part of it, okay? I'm like, you guys know silver's cheap right now. Are you a buyer? Is it wise to sell? Okay, you have to take a look at those things as well. The resources part of it is simply enhancing your educational growth in coin collecting. All right, things that I would consider to be resources, okay, other than books. Okay, books are a no-brainer. You get smarter, you get wise, you get wiser when you read books, okay? But books are not the end all. A lot of the same information that you see in the cherry picker's guide or even the red book is available online. All right takes a little bit of dedicated searching. You got PCGS price guide, you got coin facts, not to mention all of the forum pages, okay? Cointalk.com, coincommunity.com, PCGS collectors universe, and then you have all the, what I call the reference type sites. Um, some of you really enjoy errorreference.com. That is an awesome site. Go on Google, type in error reference coin, hit enter, and then you're gonna have the website right there bookmark it. You have that site. You have Lincoln Cent Resource for all of your Lincoln Penny needs. You have um, doubleddie.com, which I believe is Wexler's site. You also have Variety Vista. If you want to take a look at all of the kind of like nickels, dimes, quarter, double dies, and everything like that, that's a great site. You also have, um, let's see, plus you have some of the more obscure sites you know, that are dedicated to a specific series, okay? Did you know there's a website that's dedicated to just simply Seated Liberty Dimes, all right? There's a lot of varieties to be found in there. Plus, you also have a couple masters of that subject that just focus on that particular series, okay? And as a result, they are the go-to people. They are the mentors that a lot of people go to in order to find out more information on Seated Liberty Dimes, Okay, it's that simple. You find a subject. If you want to be kind of like the, the Swiss Army knife of coin collecting, like I am, kind of, I don't claim to know 100% of everything of every single series. Okay, if you said, hey, Sean, tell me a little about, bit about colonials. Well, I can't. I don't know enough about colonials to make educated copy. All right, it, 
You know, it's just, I, I will tell you straight away, colonials I don't do, okay? What else? Well, I don't know a whole lot about uh, fractional currency. I don't know a whole lot, as much as some of you believe, Civil War tokens, okay? And as far as U.S. coins, okay, I don't know a whole lot about, say, 20 cent pieces. I don't know a whole lot about three cent pieces, two cent pieces, okay? There are specific people that specialize in those particular series. The Cherry Picker's Guide focuses on all denominations from half cents, believe it or not, all the way up into the gold pieces. Each particular series, like someone who specializes in, say, shield nickels, there is an individual along with a club uh, that they have put together for, you know, that subject matter, okay? If you want to get into collecting shield nickels, okay, there's a specific club dedicated for that particular series. It's really neat. But again, it's mastering all of the available resources, okay, and then harnessing that so that way you can make better selling decisions. You can make better buying decisions, okay, utilizing the market. You could, you know, gauge trends, all right? The, the, the market part is a huge component of it, especially if you're going to get into the business of being like a traveling coin dealer. That's always important. But those are undeniably the three biggest components that you're going to have to master in order to make it through this hobby. Okay, number one, mastering the magnifier. I know that seems kind of weird to have this one as a top three, but believe it or not, this is right up there. Errors and varieties, know what they are, know the differences, because that's going to help when you go to cherry pick coins. And number one, master your resources it is extremely broad, okay, and the market. All right, now the, another part of the resources is going out and branching off and utilizing even Facebook groups and all of the social media parts of it uh, to gaining an understanding of what you're dealing with in coin collecting. It's extremely broad, but, you know, with the amount right of support and, um, you know, the, the resources, okay, you will go far, okay? Here's the good news, okay? We're getting into summer, okay? I am going to tell you right now, I'm going to dedicate... The better part of the next three months between now and August 31st, I think there's 31 days in August, um, to errors, varieties, okay? Knowing what they are, how much they're worth, and where you could go to get more information on them, okay? That's important. There's going to be a huge emphasis on errors and varieties. Secondly, magnif magnification. We're going to be doing more under the magnifier type of looks at various coins that are going to revolve around errors and varieties, okay? There's going to be less emphasis, of, albeit I'm still going to have my Monday market report on graded coins, much like in May. So that's what I want to do. I want to get you guys hooked up and set up and ready to go when fall hits. Because what happens in fall? People are cashing in their coins. They're getting ready for the holiday season. It's the same thing every single year. People are cashing in old collections of coins in piggy banks, stuff that gets thrown in there. They don't know what they have. And guess what? You have the best quality coin mix out there to date between October and January 1st. Okay, so we're going to get you guys hooked up with all the information you need to know on what to find and what to look for. Sorry to keep this video so long, you know, but it's important that we begin to address it now because summertime will be a little bit slower and quieter, you know, in terms of the market. So this is a great time to catch up on educational aspects of it and mastering, you know, some of the more smaller items, you know, like magnification and all that great stuff. So I want to thank you guys for joining in on this video where we're, we talk about the three things that you're going to master to be successful in numismatics. I'm your host, Sean. Thank you for joining in. You guys have a wonderful day and God bless. Thank you for all the views and support.